Hello students. In this video, let us start the lesson Dignity of Labor. As the warm-up activity, we have two tasks. Discuss with your partner the different kinds of professions. So for this task, you need to have a categorized list of different kinds of professions. Now you can take some time to think. First, you can start at your home. What are the different kinds of jobs that your family members have? You can start there and then you can think about maybe your school teachers. You can think about your neighbors and you can make a list of the different kinds of professions. Let me just give some pointers to start with. So like I said, there is the teaching profession. So you have teachers around you and then we have different sectors of professions. Firstly, we have those professions where the work is mechanical or physical. For example, the field of agriculture. So the field of agriculture and other professions where your involved in physical activity is one category of professions. Then we have another category where the work is more mental in the sense that, for example, your teachers and others, say lawyers, accountants, these people, their professions are dependent on their skills. So these are the different types of professions. So here I have the website of Ministry of Labor and Employment of the Government of India and we have a list of 127 professions. You can go ahead and take a look at them if you want. The second task is task B. You must have seen your mother and father work at home and outside. They work hard from morning till night. Make a list of the work each one does. So, two examples have been given to you. Mother cuts grass, father plows the field. So, you can add on to this list by observing your parents. For example, if your father cooks, you can just add here, cooks food. And maybe your mother helps you study. So, you can just add helps us study. So you can add on to this list with more tasks that your parents do throughout the day. Now, let us start the lesson. Once there lived a rich businessman. He had a lazy son. The father wanted his son to be hardworking and responsible. He wanted his son to realize the value of labor. Labor is the hard work that we do. So once upon a time, there was a very rich businessman, but his son was a lazy person. The father wanted his son to be hardworking and responsible and realize the value of labor. One day, the father called his son and said, Today, I want you to go out and earn something. Otherwise, you won't be given food tonight. So because the father wanted the son to understand the value of labor, he is teaching him a lesson. So he is saying, today you need to go out and earn something. Otherwise, you won't be given food tonight. So if you don't earn, then I won't give you any food today. So that is what the father is saying. The lazy boy was not used to doing any kind of work. The demand by his father scared him. So we can see here that the little boy, he was lazy and he was not used to doing any kind of work. And so when his father asked him or demanded him to go out and earn something, he, he got scared. He went crying to his mother. Her heart melted at the sight of tears in her son's eyes. So, the boy went to his mother and he was crying. She felt very sorry for him. When you say somebody's heart melted, this means that they understand what the other person is going through and they feel bad for them. 
So the mother, she started feeling very bad because her son is crying. She gave him a gold coin. So what does she do? She gives him a gold coin. In the evening, when the father asked him what he had earned, he showed the gold coin. Then what happens is that evening, the father, he goes to his son and he says, okay, I've told you today, if you haven't earned anything, then I won't give you food. Then show me what you have earned. The boy shows the gold coin. But did he earn the gold coin? No, his mother gave it to him. Let's see what the father says. The father asked him to throw it in the well in front of their house. The son did as he was told. So the father says, okay, now throw this coin into the well. And the son, he obeys father. The father was a man of wisdom. He guessed that the gold coin was given by his wife. The next day, he sent her to her parents' house. He ordered his son to go out and earn something. This time, the sister gave him a rupee coin. So the father is very wise and he gets to know that the boy hasn't actually earned the gold coin. So next day, he wants to repeat the same thing. So he just sends his wife to her parents' house. And then he ordered the son to do the same thing. He said, okay, go and earn something today also. But this time, his sister is the one that saves him. She gives him a rupee coin. The boy showed his father the coin. This time also, the boy, he says, okay, this is what I've earned. The father asked him to throw that coin to the well. So the father says, okay, again, you just throw it into the well. And the son did so. This time also, the boy just, as we can see here, threw the coin into the well. Okay. The father realized that yet again, someone had helped the boy. He sent his daughter back to her in-laws house. He asked again, he again asked his son to go out and earn something else he would not be given supper. So what he does is, uh, so the daughter, she is already married and the father sends his daughter back to her house and he asked the boy to go out and earn something again else he would not be given supper. Supper is dinner. This time there was no one to help the boy. So his mother is away, his sister is away, there's nobody to help him. He went to the market in search of work. Now he has to do work. So he goes to the market searching for work. A shopkeeper offered to give him, a shopkeeper offered him two rupees for carrying his bag to his house. So the shopkeeper says, if you carry this bag to my house, I'll give you two rupees. The boy accepted the offer. When there, were, there is a job that is uh, being accepted, this is a common way of saying the employer offers the job and the employee accepts the job or the job offer. So in this case, in our story, the boy is saying, okay, I'll carry the bag for you. You can give me two rupees. He was sweating a lot by the time he finished the work. His feet were trembling and his neck and back were aching. So because the bag was heavy, the boy is very tired. He's sweating and his feet were trembling. If you put a lot of exercise onto any of your body parts in one day, then you can feel them shaking. Trembling means shaking and his neck and back were aching. So he had pain in his neck and back. He returned home and handed the two rupee coin to his father. His father asked him to throw it into the well. The boy cried out in pain and said, Father, I earned this money. My entire body is aching. My palms have rashes. And you are asking me to throw my hard-earned money into the well? 
so this time the boy doesn't want to throw the money into the well because he earned that money he's saying i have worked so hard for that money my entire body is aching my palms have rashes and you are asking me to throw my hard earned money into the well now the father gets to know that it's the boy that has done the work the businessman was happy his son had realized the value of hard work the son promised never to be lazy the father handed over the keys of his shop to the son so in this story the boy is actually a very young adult it's not a little boy like we see in the pictures so the father wanted to teach him the value of labor before he handed over the business to the boy and once he learns the value of labor the businessman is happy and he hands over the shop to the boy so that is the end of the lesson now let us start with the words to no the first word is lazy it means one who does not want to work so in our story the boy was lazy which is why his father wanted to teach him the value of work responsible one who can take up work and finish it so the word responsible means somebody who has the ability not only to accept work but to finish it and make sure that everything that needs to be done is done realize it's to become aware or understand something labor labor is hard work scare scare is to get frightened so in our story a boy got scared because his father told him that he would not be getting any food if he doesn't earn melt is to get softened so the way we pronounce this word soften it's different based on the different pronunciations for example so you can either pronounce it as soften or saffen okay when you're saying soft you say the t but when you're saying soften the t is silent up next we have wisdom which means knowledge supper is the meal that is eaten at night accept is to agree tremble shake due to fear or excess work so in this story when the boy was carrying the bag on his back his legs were trembling because it was so heavy ache is to pain rashes are red marks on the skin these are the words to know now let us start with the vocabulary b1 write the other genders of the words underlined and complete the sentences so we need to find the other gender form of the words that are underlined raju's father and dash went to the market so raju's father and mother went to the market my uncle and dash came to our house my uncle and aunt came to our house my grandfather and dash go for a walk so my grandfather and my grandmother go for a walk boys and dash play in the playground boys and girls play in the playground the wife was cool and calm but her dash was tensed the wife so the other gender form of wife is husband there is another form called as the gender neutral form this means that you can either refer to a man or a woman when you say spouse usage of gender neutral words are becoming more and more common these days because they can refer to either the wife or the husband of the person you're talking about up next we have v2 match the following so in section a we have words the first word is businessman so the businessman was was the businessman lazy no the businessman was rich mother 
Mother gave the boy how many rupees? Mother gave him a gold coin. Sister gave the boy, that's right, one rupee. And the son was lazy. And the shopkeeper gave the boy two rupees because he made an offer saying that if you carry my bag, I will give you two rupees. V3. Some words are given below. They refer to the father and the son in the lesson. Select the appropriate words and write them in the right column. So what you need to do is you need to classify these words and decide whether they are referring to the father or the son. First we have scared. So the son was scared because his father said earn something. And the son was the lazy one. In our story, the father was wise. And guess. So this is referring to the part where father guesses that the boy hasn't earned the money himself. So this is father. Tears. So it's the son that starts crying and goes to his mother. Sweat. In the end of the story, when he is working, the son sweats. Happy. So we can refer to either the boy or the father, but when we take a look at our lesson, we can find it here that the businessman was happy. So here it is referring to the father. Rashes. So the boy had rashes from all the hard work, so it's the son. Strict. The businessman was strict. Ah, so this is the father. Egg. It's the son's body that was aching because of the hard work. Value of hard work. So we can say that it's the son's because he learned the value of hard work. Promised. Again, we need to take a look at the lesson where the son promised never to be lazy. So it's the son. Because of the lack of space, I have just written the letters S for son and F for father, you can classify and write them in the columns given down below. Up next, we have comprehension. Let us answer them one by one. Answer the following questions and share your answers with your partner. Then write. First question is, what kind of a boy was the businessman's son? So let's take a notepad to write these answers. So here we have the first question. What kind of a boy was the businessman's son? The answer, the businessman's son was a lazy boy. Second question, what did the businessman tell his son? So what did the businessman tell his son? The businessman asked the boy to go out and earn something. Otherwise, he won't be given any food that night. So this is what the businessman told his son. He said, you need to go out and earn something. Otherwise, I won't give you food tonight. So here is the part of, our, of the lesson where we can come up with that answer. Today, I want you to go out and earn something. Otherwise, you won't be given food tonight. So observe that when we are writing it in the answer form, we have to convert this tonight into that night. Similarly, whenever we are converting something from this active, uh, I mean, from this direct form of speech to indirect form of speech, then we need to make some changes. So this is something new for you all. What I'm talking about is called as direct and indirect form of speech. What this means is whenever we are inside a story, observe these quotation marks. Whenever somebody is saying something, we put the speech directly as they have said it. So this is known as direct speech. When you're saying, when you're writing something as it was spoken. And indirect form is converting it into a statement. So in indirect form, there won't be any apostrophes or there won't be any quotations. 
So, converting this into indirect speech, it becomes our answer where the businessman asked the boy to go out and earn something, otherwise he won't be given food that night. So, when the father said, today I want you to go out and earn something, that becomes the businessman asked the boy to go out and earn something. Observe that we have converted tonight into that night. Up next, why did the mother give her son a gold coin? The mother's heart melted at the sight of tears in her son's eyes. So, she gave him a gold coin. Fourth one, um, yeah, fourth one, what did the father ask the son to do with the coins? So, after the boy was given the coins from his mother and his sister, the father asked the son to throw the coins into the well. So, the father asked the son to throw the coins into the well. Why did the son go to the market? The son went to the market in search of work. Sixth one, how did he earn 2 rupees? He earned 2 rupees by carrying a shopkeeper's bag to his home. So, he carried a shopkeeper's bag to his home for which the shopkeeper gave him 2 rupees back. Seventh one, why was the boy not ready to throw the 2 rupee coin into the well? So, the boy... Uh, was not ready to throw the Turupi coin into the well because he had earned the money doing hard work. So, because the boy had earned the money doing hard work, he was not ready to throw it into the well. That completes C1. So, the next section is uh, down here, C2. Discuss with your friends and answer the following questions in four to six sentences each. So, try to answer them yourself and then take a look at the solutions that I provide. The first question is, describe the attitude of the boy towards work. Attitude means how did the boy feel about doing work? Answer, the boy was lazy. He was not used to doing any kind of work. This demand so, this in the sense, the demand by his father to earn something scared him. So, this was the attitude of the boy towards work. Second one, you are asking me to throw my hard-earned money into the well. Explain the feelings of the boy when he said this. The answer, the boy had previously thrown the coins so, this is coins. He had not earned without hesitation. So, hesitation means unwilling to do something. The boy was not having any hesitation of any kind. Instead, he readily threw those coins. But when it came to throwing the money he earned, he became sad and cried out angrily, saying that his entire body was aching and his palms had rashes and disagreed to send his hard-earned money into the well. So, this was his feelings when he was asked to throw the money into the well. So, that is the answer to C2, 1 and 2. Up next, we have language exercises. So, we have already talked about this before. These are called as contractions. This is when you shorten any set of words so that they are shorter to write. The mark is an apostrophe which shows where the letters are left out. Now, read after the teacher. So, here we can see the apostrophe and the apostrophe indicate that the words have been shortened. Now, let us try to read them out loud one by one. Cannot, cannot becomes can't. We will becomes will. Do not, don't. We are, we're. They have, they have. You are, you are. So, observe that these two are different words. You are and your. 
always be mindful of which of the spellings you are using. So you can say, I am your friend. So this is a correct sentence. Okay. In this case, you are using your. When it comes to you are, then you have to make sure that you are using the correct form. For example, you can say, you are my friend. Always make sure you capitalize the first word. Okay. Next one. There is, there's, who is, whose, is not, isn't. So the pronunciation is isn't. Up next, write the short forms for the following. Has not, hasn't. Are not, aren't. Have not, haven't. They are, there. I will, I'll. Okay? Write the full forms for the following. Weren't. Were not. Doesn't. Does not. I have. I have. What's. What is. She'll. She will. So this is the end of L1 language exercises. Up next we have L2 speed sounds. Oi as in oil. A noise irritates a boy but doesn't his temper boil. Now say these words. Boil, coil, soil, spoil, coin, join, voice and choice. Okay students. This is the end of the lesson, Dignity of Labor. I will see you all in the next video.